All right, so today I'm gonna to try to make a video on working on the instrument cluster. I don't know if I talked about it in any of my older videos, but when I got this car from my brother, there was problems with the uh, temperature gauge and the fuel gauge not working. And I, I was working on it and I made a big mistake when I had the gauge cluster taken out. I had it laying on the hood of the car. Now the car is only in primer right now, so it's not like it's got a perfect paint job to worry about. But uh, I had it laying on the hood of the car and I was inside working on some wiring and all of a sudden the cluster fell off the car onto the ground and busted. And that was a bad day. Uh, and these things are kind of hard to come by. There's like one on eBay and it's very expensive. But it busted the lens, as you can tell here. And it also busted this black part behind there. And I super glued it back together enough to make it function. My brother had bought these uh, gauge faces and put on these because the behind there, the original gauges had some surface rust and this was the only ones he could find and they're on eBay and they're about $30. And basically you just clean up the metal and attach it to the original face. And it, it, it looked like a new gauge and it's okay. Uh, I looked it up online and I found that the, the people that make this also make other colors, gray, carbon fiber, several, I mean, they, they make a lot of different ones. I ended up buying some new ones for my new gauges that are carbon fiber and I'm going to be putting those on too but uh, these cars have three gauges basically they have the fuel gauge the temperature gauge and the speedometer and uh, so basically I'm going to test those that are on the cluster that came out of my parts car and I'm going to assuming they're good which I, I Right now, I think they probably will be. I'm going to put the new uh, face plates on there because the, the cluster in that car has also got some surface rust. So in order to make it look better, I'm going to do that. And I'm going to try to put new LED light bulbs in there. And I'll test everything on the bench so that I know everything works before I put it back in. But anyway, that's what we're going to do. And I've got a new lens that came out of my parts car. And I've got the part that goes behind there. So I'm going to try to put everything back together and get everything back in here in, in a better condition than what it is right now. When you're working on these, your, your main connector, your connector plugs into this. And these things are very fragile. It's hard to tell, but they are extremely fragile. And if they get wrinkled, it, will call, it can cause a bad connection. You can see that one's slightly wrinkled. So when you put them back together, you need to make sure they're laid out flat whenever you put it back together. But as I test it, I'm going to connect power to the different ones of these. So each of the uh, gauges, the gas gauge and the temperature gauge, they have two screws that hold them in. I'm going to take those out. I'm going to have to replace the faces anyway. So I'm going to take them out and when I test them, I can test them while they're out. Also, while I got this apart, I'm going to clean the contact where, where these things get their uh, connection to the uh, circuit board. This one is the temperature gauge. There's actually one wire that connects to it. And there's also a ground. You can see this one connects, it touches the ground right here when you, when we reconnect it. All right, so when we're testing the fuel gauge, it kind of works the same, but opposite. And there's more information on testing fuel gauges and sending units if you have a problem. Uh, there's a lot of videos. American Auto Wire makes good videos for that. But right now, you can see I got this middle terminal grounded to the negative of the power supply. And I got the, if you're looking at it from the back, 
The right side is the power coming in just like on the temperature unit. Right now, I just got this one clipped on the board, but when I clip it over onto the uh, the other terminal here, it's gonna go all the way back to empty. So you can see right there, I clipped it on the other terminal and it's going empty. So in the fuel gauge would be going closer to ground, it's gonna drive this thing back to empty. So both of these gauges are good. So now I know that I'm good on these two gauges. So the only thing I got left to do is to test the uh, speedometer. So I was just gonna talk just a little bit about testing the speedometer. I hooked the speedometer cable up to it and I hooked the drill to the end of the speedometer cable. It has a square end. And I just turned the drill and I tested it and I was able to see that the speedometer works, the odometer works, and the trip odometer works. Uh, that's about all I can do. Hopefully, I have had speedometers before on these old cars. Once they roll around to a higher number, they get stuck and the odometer won't turn to the next number and it causes problems and causes the speedometer to start jumping. So hopefully that's not the case with this one. Right now, that's the only thing I can do is test it. Obviously, I can't run it through all 100,000 miles, but it it's, seems to be working good at this point. All right, so I've taken my speedometer cluster apart and cleaned it up and it said to scuff up the areas that had rust so you can see these little areas around the gauge i mean around the dummy lights had some rust so i scuffed them up with a scotch bright and now i'm getting close to where i'm going to be able to put on the new uh overlay And uh, they, it comes with instructions. It tells you pretty well how to do it. And it comes with a little kit. I bought the little kit for install. Come with this and a squeegee. And it was www.gageco.com is where I bought it from. I'm not really uh, promoting them, but I know people are probably interested in what I did here because I think a lot of people have the same situation. All right, so on the clock face, I've already used the uh, scotch bright and cleaned it up where it had a little bit of rust. And I'm just doing one to show you how, how to do them. I've uh, done a couple already. But basically, you peel these off and you spray it with the spray that they gave you. Peel it off. Spray it with a spray. Make sure to get it all over. And then I'm going to put it down on here. Very important to make sure it's even. And you use the squeegee they gave. With the install kit. I actually had to buy the install kit. They don't give it to you. It's not very expensive. I took the hands off of here. They, they come off actually fairly easy. Uh, they sit on three different size pegs, so it's pretty easy to uh, get them off. And then I'm just going to work with it and try to get the air bubbles out. Using the squeegee and my fingers, but you got air bubbles and you got liquid in there from the application spray. And they say that you can use a hair dryer and it speeds up the drying, the curing of it. Probably the least amount of uh, liquid you can put on there, the better, because I can see that the liquid is uh, trapped under here. You know, you get the gist of it. That's uh, that's what the final product looks like. And the edges are going to be covered with the speedometer area, so that won't be a problem either when it's all said and done. 
All right, so this is kind of what I got after I've got it all back together. It looks better than it did. Definitely. I'm not 100% crazy about the uh, vinyl stick on. You know, it doesn't look as good as an original painted one would. But overall, it's a pretty good look. I think it's going to be just fine. Definitely better than what I got right now. I'll take some more pictures or I'll finish the video up after I've got it installed in the car. All right, so here's what we ended up with uh, for the dash vinyl. I got my new plastic uh, surround bezel in there. And I ended up, with, I ended up buying the carbon fiber, which is it's okay. And I don't think it looks quite as good as the white did as far as the quality of the material. I think the white... Uh, the white face gauge stuff was a little thicker that my brother had installed and it didn't show the uh, indentions of the letters behind the wrap. But anyway, it looks pretty good. It's definitely an improvement over what it was. The LEDs that I put in there are really nice. They light it up really well in the dark. Well, it's not dark right now, so you can't see it as well. But Anyway, it's, it all looks pretty good. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I got all the LED light bulbs in the dash. I used the white LEDs, the bright white. They have kind of a bluish hue to them, but I, I didn't want anything with the actual color. But I got them installed everywhere. Also the courtesy lights. Anyway, I'm gonna be doing some more videos, so please like and subscribe and you'll get to follow along as I complete the different stages of this 1967 Cadillac Calais project.